In 2022, the number of Colorado kids placed in out-of-home situations was the lowest in state history. That's a good thing, children staying with their families. But beyond that headline, the state says the children with acute and complex needs who do need to go into some sort of congregate residential care have needs beyond what the state can provide. And that is leading to a population that's in crisis whose needs are not being met. Tonight, we're focusing on kids who've been diagnosed with acute autism. Some families are desperate for answers, waiting months for the state to fund a place for them to stay should those children have aggressive behaviors. And even then, sometimes there's no answer, such is the case for one family in Monument. Our home, uh, we are constantly on watch. Layers of patches. When he is dysregulated or upset, there's not much we can do as parents. And scripture cover the places. It happens to be my son is a kicker, so he'll go up to walls and kick holes in the walls. Where autism boils over. As soon as he hit 13, there was a big uptick in aggressive behavior, including physical aggression and property damage. Jody Coyne's son, who we are not naming, was diagnosed with autism when he was four. He's 16 now. He is basically a man now. When um, the testosterone hits the autism, it can often be very explosive and very um, very hard to manage. The last year, she and her husband started to look for a residential home for their son, but a year has gone by. More destruction beyond they can count without resolution. It's very exhausting. And we're not the only ones. 14 kids are currently out of state who have behavioral issues like self-harm. The state couldn't provide a record of the number of children with developmental disabilities who've been sent away away from everything familiar, simply because Colorado doesn't have residential homes to meet the need. But we do need more settings for these young people. Minna Castillo-Cohen is with the Colorado Department of Human Services. She tells me in addition to at least the 14 who have been sent away from their families out of state, 25 additional families are also waiting for a residential home for their child. I think Colorado is at a critical juncture. We need to make those investments in our full continuum of our behavioral health care system so that every child has access to the treatment services that they need. There is a possibility that the governor could be persuaded to increase the provider rate, but his proposed budget to the legislature won't be submitted until November. But even then, until there's an emergency meeting, much of the funding cannot be addressed unless it's in the legislature's long bill. The need for those services is even more important. Representative Mary Young, who hails from Weld County, is the chair of the Child Welfare Interim Committee that meets year round. The governor has asked the Department of Human Services to have this issue as being one of their wildly important goals. Representative Young sponsored a bill and eventual law to expand a neuropsych unit by 15 beds, but even the state admits the needs go beyond the supply. But 15 beds isn't enough to serve the whole state. And so we do run wait lists that really um, have our young people in the queue to be able to take one of those beds over at Laird and when one opens up. A reality that Jody knows all too well. When you have um, families who are frequently in crisis, we don't have the luxury of um, being able to go to rallies or protests or organize um, in a way that garners the kind of attention that um, results in actions. And there's a separate issue here. Day programs for behavioral health, those are handled by a separate state agency. Medicaid reimbursement rates are lagging on that front, leading some providers to pull out because they say workers are not being paid enough. The CDC estimates one in 36 children has autism, a number that's grown in frequency over the last 20 years. We'll be right back.